five, four, three, two, one. We have liftoff. They did it again. SpaceX has achieved the impossible with another successful booster catch, marking the second time they've pulled off this incredible feat. But that's not all. This entire launch was nearly flawless. From liftoff to booster recovery, they've addressed almost every issue from past launches, making this mission a shining example of progress and innovation. In this video, we'll cover all the details. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more exciting updates. Engineers and technicians worked tirelessly to ensure every system and component was functioning perfectly. The launch pad had undergone rigorous inspections, with the team paying close attention to the hydraulic systems of the launch mount and the stability of the massive chopstick arms, which were tasked with catching the super heavy booster after liftoff. At T minus 10 hours, the countdown sequence began. Teams initiated pre flight checks on the super heavy booster and Starship spacecraft. This included testing communication systems, verifying fuel levels, and ensuring the readiness of the Raptor engines. Each of the 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster underwent individual diagnostics to confirm they were operational. The weather was also monitored closely, with clear skies and favorable wind conditions reported, contributing to the green light for the launch. At T-2 hours, the fueling process began. SpaceX loaded the booster with supercooled liquid oxygen and liquid methane, carefully monitoring the pressurization of the tanks. Engineers also verified the structural integrity of the heat shield tiles on Starship, which had been updated to improve thermal resistance during re-entry. At T-1 hour, the final go-no-go -go poll was conducted. Each team leader confirmed their system's readiness, from propulsion to guidance and navigation. The results were positive across the board, signaling that the mission was proceeding as planned. The live broadcast began, with SpaceX providing real-time updates and visuals of the rocket on the launch pad. At T-10 minutes, the automated launch sequence was initiated. The launch tower's chopstick arms were retracted to their holding positions, ensuring a clear path for the rocket's ascent. Engineers monitored the countdown closely, watching for any anomalies. At T-2 minutes, the rocket's autonomous systems took over, with the onboard computers finalizing pre-launch diagnostics. At T-10 seconds, the Raptor engines ignited in a staggered sequence, generating a deafening roar and a bright plume of exhaust. The engines ramped up to full power, producing a combined thrust of 16.7 million pounds. At T-0, the clamps holding the Super Heavy booster in place were released, and the rocket began its ascent. The initial phase of the launch was smooth. The Super Heavy booster performed flawlessly, propelling the Starship vehicle into the sky with unprecedented power. The live feed provided breathtaking views of the rocket climbing through the atmosphere, leaving a trail of fire and smoke. The Raptor engines operated at optimal efficiency, with no signs of instability or performance degradation. At T plus two minutes, the rocket passed through max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. This milestone was crucial as it demonstrated the structural resilience of both the booster and the spacecraft. At T plus three minutes, the main engine cutoff occurred. The super heavy booster shut down its engines, completing its primary role in the mission. Moments later, the booster separated from the Starship spacecraft, which continued its trajectory using its own Raptor engines. The separation was seamless, marking another successful step in the mission. The focus then shifted to the booster's descent and recovery. Equipped with grid fins for stability, the booster began its controlled fall back to Earth. SpaceX's engineers monitored its trajectory closely, making real-time adjustments to ensure it would land precisely on the launch pad. This phase was particularly critical, as it tested the updated guidance systems and the capability of the chopstick arms to catch the booster. Meanwhile, the Starship vehicle continued its flight, carrying 10 Starlink simulators. These mock satellites were designed to replicate the size and weight of actual Starlink satellites, providing valuable data for future deployments. 
the spacecraft followed a suborbital trajectory, reaching its intended altitude before beginning its descent. At T plus six minutes, the booster approached the launch site. The grid fins worked in tandem with the Raptor engines to align the booster with the designated landing zone. The chopstick arms extended, preparing to catch the massive rocket. The live feed captured the booster's dramatic descent, showcasing the precision of SpaceX's engineering. At T plus seven minutes, the booster successfully landed, with the chopstick arms catching it midair and securing it to the launch tower. The booster was then safely lowered onto the pad for post-flight inspections. The Starship vehicle continued its descent, with the upgraded heat shield tiles performing exceptionally well, protecting the spacecraft from the intense heat of re-entry. But just as the mission seemed to be proceeding flawlessly, an unexpected event occurred. At approximately 8.5 minutes into the flight, telemetry from the upper stage was abruptly lost. Moments later, the vehicle exploded, breaking apart during re-entry over the Turks and Caicos Islands. The debris scattered across the sky, creating a spectacle that resembled a meteor shower. Witnesses in the region described the scene as both mesmerizing and unnerving, with fragments of the spacecraft lighting up the night sky as they burned upon re-entry. Initial investigations point to several potential causes for this catastrophic failure. One possible issue may have arisen during the propellant venting process. Toward the end of the burn, excess liquid oxygen is typically vented to maintain balance and stability. A leak or an improper venting sequence in the aft section could have created an unstable environment, potentially leading to a combustion event in an area that should have remained inert. This would explain the sudden explosion and disintegration of the upper stage. Another scenario being examined is an engine malfunction. The upper stage of Starship relies on its advanced Raptor engines, which operate under extreme thermal and mechanical stress. If one or more engines experienced a failure during this critical phase, it could have destabilized the vehicle. Such a malfunction might have triggered the loss of control and the subsequent explosion during re-entry. Structural integrity is also under scrutiny as a contributing factor. The intense conditions of re-entry subject the vehicle to tremendous thermal and aerodynamic stress. While the upgraded heat shield tiles performed as expected, it's possible that another part of the structure was compromised. A structural failure at such a critical moment would have left the vehicle vulnerable to disintegration as it attempted to re-enter the atmosphere. As debris rained down over the Turks and Caicos, SpaceX engineers quickly began efforts to analyze the remnants to identify the root cause of the failure. Regarding the issue, SpaceX made a statement on Twitter saying, Starship experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly during its ascent burn. Teams will continue to review data from today's flight test to better understand root cause. We'll share more updates about the cause of this issue as we uncover them. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.